Yo, what's good? My name is Sino. I'm a 20 year old artist from Arizona. I've been making music since a kid, but I've been dropping since 2021. I'm part of a collective called PMW Entertainment, and we're excited to bring you multiple things this year. Yeah, with a roll, but I know how it's cold. I just be sipping that red, sipping red till my kidney explode. What do you think goes over a lot of people's heads? Bro, honestly, what goes over a lot of people's heads is they don't understand the whole backstory behind all the projects because it's all connected. It's like a full story that I'm constantly telling. And the original Sino project that um, I dropped, it, it shows me choosing music over a girl. It's like the prequel to my story, which starts with Yin Yang. And I'm creating a four album saga called Seeing Stars in the Moment. And it's just like my whole transition into becoming a star. And there's a lot of story and backstory to the projects if you like dive into it. And, uh, you know, I, what's sad is like, I don't expect a lot of people to really dive into it a lot, but it is always going to be there. And that's what matters, you know, like when the, when one of the famous painters was painting in the, these huge churches in Europe. He was painting in crevices that no one will ever see, but you know, he said that God will see. So there's four aspects to the Seeing Stars saga, four albums. First album was Yin Yang. And the Yin Yang is finding my gift and understanding it. And there's a light side and there's a dark side that comes with it. So there's two sides to the album. And that was just accepting or not accepting, but finding out who I was and figuring out like this gift that I had and this voice. And then the second album, which was Life's a Drug, I started numbing it because I was scared of my darkness and I like, I didn't like it and I had to like numb the pain from it. The third album that's actually gonna come out this year in 2023, which is called Diamonds Understood, is the effects that happened from numbing my pain in Life's a Drug. And I go down a really dark path and I let loose about a lot of emotions that you know, you don't normally hear, so that one's going to be a crazy one that comes out this year. And then the fourth and final album is called Seeing Stars. And after I go down this dark path, I choose to use my gift for good, and I accept who I am instead of looking outward for acceptance. And that's going to be the whole premise behind the album of, like, my transition into becoming a star. Tell me about your life growing up. Bro... Uh, I grew up in a music family. My dad, he was um, signed to a record label, EMI, in Canada, and he toured all over. My mom was a vocal coach, so growing up I played in the church band, and that's really where I found my love for music, was like rock music. And yeah, eventually it just changed into, I'm molded into the man I am today. Tell me about your life growing up outside of music. Um, outside of music, I was pretty, uh, I don't know, I was pretty just like a normal kid. I hated school really, played video games. I did karate, did football, but I always, looked at music because I did all these other things but like when it come to music I was always just like so much better at music you know like I played football but I wasn't the best at football there was kids who were just cracked at football I go I did cross country I wasn't like insane at cross country I did school I wasn't insane at school but like music I felt like I could compete and like show out what <laughs> is PMW to you what does PMW to me? Bro, PMW is like a community of just like-minded people. Like, PMW is what you make of it. We're just trying to connect people and bring, we're trying to make art cool again because I feel like the artistry has really fallen off recently and just all facets of things. It, like, AI can just like do crazy things nowadays. And so we're trying to make like, Real art cool again. Real human art. Yeah. 
I like that, uh, brother. As as far as the show, I mean, PMW, the backstory behind it was just a brotherhood, and just a collective of just friends in high school, and we just started manifesting, basically. Type shit, bro. Those friends in high school that you were like, we finna turn up and make a business, bro. We finna, we finna make it out and have a have the, a crib, bro. We finna the, not the live in Arizona is, no more. We were fucking on this entrepreneurship <laughs> at, in high school because right as Airbnb started, we went and we'd buy an Airbnb for the night and then just throw a crazy party. And that's where PMW's name, like, PMW presents the PMW party. Like, it's a whole fucking thing. And then we got in trouble and a lot of trouble. And this is the first time where PMW's is like our comeback. Like, we've almost been around for a year now. And this show is like, it's like our debut. And it's all legal? Oh, 100%. So we're talking no money, no money laundering type things, you know? No uh, no illicit activities, no crimes being committed by C-Note? I am going to say no comment. And, uh, all right, so... Skip uh, to the next question. That's, that's C-Note right there showing you your rights to plead the fifth whenever possible. What artists are connected with PMW? So... Before we talk about all the artists that are part of the show and have shown love, I want to talk about the artists behind the scenes. First off, we got NX and Lemon. And they come in and put hours in, bro. I can't even keep up with them. I'd be falling asleep in the studio. But I'd be waking up and they'd be having whole songs finished and shit. And then we got Smoke Daddy and K9. Now you guys probably know K9 from Rainbow Road. And my first feature ever in the game. But bro's dropping an album, 420. And he just dropped a single. And Smoke Daddy just dropped a legendary body that work. Mixed and mastered by yours truly. And bro, like, I'm just excited for all the music that I constantly see being made. Like, I'll be on the phone in a PMW meeting. And there's just constant work going on in the studio. What album do you like the most? Out of all my projects? Yeah. Okay, that's a really hard one. But, okay, so I think that Yin Yang is more iconic as a project. And I feel that it has more, like, maybe memorable songs. But I think that Life's a Drug right now is just... It's just my best album. Like, it, the songs on it, and the mixes, and the production, and the story. I just feel like... I definitely took it to another level when it comes to that. But it's based on preference for sure. But definitely those two projects are my favorite. What is your favorite song on each one of your projects? I don't think that's possible, bro. They're so, like... You have to. Favorite song favorite of song. all the projects. You have to just pick one. I'll say for Yin Yang, 666999. I love that song because I felt like when I was playing it for people before I dropped it, a lot of people were like, eh, I don't know. They didn't really fully support it. And I always just loved that shit. Loved it and always saw the vision for it. And, and yeah, so I'll say 666999 was definitely my favorite. For Life's a Drug, oh, I'll just, I mean, I, I kind of feel like I have to go with Like Me. Mm hmm. I feel like Like Me was just always different. She is like me. Everyone always heard that and was like, that's crazy. By this time, you guys already saw the music video. It's out. Go watch it. No, Type don't shit. watch Created it. Created completely watch it. by PMW. Type shit, bro. To brainwash you and control you. Shout out, you bro. Into, uh, only people, only people that are six foot can watch the video. Don't six foot K9. one plus, bro. Don't be a pussy. You have to be at least six foot. I can't. Don't listen to K Nine because, bro, is not six foot. I. <laughs> I'm not watching it. He's never it. watching it. I'm not watching it. <laughs> That's funny. Breaking news, K9 just got cut. Damn, oh, bro. God. Oh, Damn, God. Damn, you're still name dropping him? And you're still name dropping him, bro? Cut that shit, then. Get out. No, <laughs> Bro, in the interview, we're just going to bleep his name. Type shit. K De is dropped. Officially dropped. <laughs> <laughs> they just funny. deleted his files and sold his things on offer up. Who are your influences in music? All right, so... I'm gonna say my what I sound like the most 
personal opinion, I think I sound like a mixture of K Swab, Trippy Red, and D Savage in my most recent projects. But I also take hints of Suicide Boys and my Ragers and Cardi as well. I'd say like inspirations. It'd definitely be Drake, Tame Impala is like my favorite artist. I love Nirvana. Deftones, bro, Deftones is fucking insane. It's my favorite band of all time, for sure. Who inspires the drip? No. Bro, shout out to Anwar and Avenue 1337. Um, I mean, other than me fitting, I mean, this fit right here is all your boy. This is all my own clothes. But he's been dripping me out, and a lot of my fits are inspired by him, so shout out. When have you had the biggest moment where something was happening to you in real life and you knew that as soon as you recorded or got behind a mic after that, that it was going to be special? Definitely um, take a step in my babes. I kind of had that song in my head like the week before I made it. And, and what brought out that emotion? What event or... Definitely calling Dylan when he was in rehab. Yeah. And just not just that, but like the way that everybody else was like looking at the situation, but nobody really like knew the backstory. And so it was just like take a step in my shoes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like flip your perspective. Yeah. Um, well. Talk about the show to me. The show is going to be insane. Because we go from 6 to 2, technically. 6 to 10 is going to be all the main artists, which is a stacked lineup that we got. These sets are crazy, bro. I've been looking at all of them with the rehearsals, and I'm just really excited. And then after I go on and headline and perform, we got a rave from 11 to 2. So it's going to be an after party at the venue, and... Ticket sales are great right now. They're going out fast. Make sure to get a VIP if you want a shirt and a poster and free food. Cop that t-shirt, bro. That t-shirt's looking fucking insane, bro. Yeah, like, the whole the whole aspect of the show, I mean, we started it in January, and now it's about to be April. And just all aspects are finally coming together. This has been the Ceno interview with PMW Entertainment. Go stream my new song out on all platforms, and make sure to come to the show. April 7th, Steal the Scene. We got multiple artists and then we got an after party rave. We're going all night. Tickets in the bio. Make sure to follow us on all platforms. PMW Entertainment, all across the book. Subscribe for more content. And... See. What's good? It's Sino here with PMW Entertainment. Alright, stop. Move more over to the right. To your left, sorry. Yeah, alright, alright, but more to the right, just like a, a scoot. Oh, yeah, right, right there, perfect. Actually, more right. Yeah, more right. Oh, yeah, right there. Alright, move your head like that way. Yes, Mr. Sino. <laughs> How would you describe the artistic process behind Mosh Pit in the church? <laughs> <laughs> For every Listen, everybody. <laughs> Boy, I have no idea. Listen, everybody. Um, Steal the scene is, is something that's very important to all of us at BMW. Um, we all <coughs> recommend that you truly, truly try your hardest to be in attendance. Um, it's a once in a lifetime experience. Um, April 7th, you may never be able to see any of us again. You know, we all agree to not die before that night. So that's the only night that you can 100% guarantee you'll see everybody that's attached to BMW for the time being at uh, 2023 that'll be in a room at once. Maybe you get some sign, bro. Maybe you get some merch, bro. Maybe you get some that's worth a, a milli down the road. Or maybe you just want to fucking pop out and see your friends. Get lit. Bitch. April 7th. Dr. Pepper. Official drink of Steel Sea. April 7th.